I went out to California and I was like, I'm just gonna get a real job in air quotes. <laughs> I grew up, my father was a cardiologist, my uncle was a pulmonary uh, specialist, another uncle was a gastroenterologist, grandfather was a was like a family practice uh, physician, and his brother was a surgeon, general surgeon. So I, I come from a, like a, a, not only just a line of healers, but like medical providers. So I was supposed to be a physician, or they would say a doctor. I don't, I, I use the term doctor in a very specific way because as physical therapists we're also doctoring profession so I was supposed to be a phys physician um, first night of organic chemistry I was like well I got an A in regular chemistry last year and this is gonna take me four hours to do the first night of review and I sat there for about two hours and I was finally like no nope, not gonna do it it's not worth it you know it's not worth doing four to six hours of homework a day to do something I don't really have a passion for um, which is uh, working 100 hours a week, um, not seeing my kids, not being able to do all these other things that I saw that my, you know, my dad wasn't doing. And so I was like, I'll find another way. Um, I graduated uh, college from Duke University and I went out to California and I was like, I'm just gonna get a real job in air quotes. <laughs> I, I landed in California, so I'm looking for jobs at like places like Power Bar and North Face and Sierra Designs, and I get an interview at Sports Street Marketing, which they make the goo product, or they did at the time. And I show up and I'm wearing my suit, and they're like, well, we don't dress that formally here. And I was like, you're supposed to wear a suit to your interviews, right? You know? <laughs> so the next company I got an interview at, I wore a sweater and I got called back. I figured that was a good sign. Um, and that was at Sierra Designs and they couldn't hire me to answer the phones. I'm a college grad, I don't know what about it was, I couldn't get hired to answer the phones to do customer service. You know, so I became a temp and then after doing that for a while and being treated like I was um, illiterate, <laughs> basically, uh, I became a bike messenger. I, I, one of my passions in life was racing bicycles. Yep, and I couldn't figure out how to race bikes so I was like, well, working on the bike is the next best thing. And I made um, my first full paycheck, I made $1,200, which was more than my dispatcher made in his first full, full year as a bike messenger, because I already knew how to ride. I just didn't know where the hell I was going. Um, so I was doing that, and um, it wasn't sustainable, it wasn't a long-term sustainable thing. But uh, in the back of my mind, I was trying to figure out how do I race bikes and earn a living? And I had been exposed through a yoga class in college, just a massage, and through my mom um, getting me a massage when my legs were hurting one summer when I was, I raced bikes in college, high school and college, and so my legs hurt, and I was like, that really helped. I was like, and she was like, you should go do something with your hands, like do, do massage therapy, or look into it at least for us, you know. So I was like, I had one of these epiphanies after a long day of riding a bike. I was like, oh, I can go do massage where I can see four people a day, make $40 an hour, you know, or, or if I'm my own practice, I can charge $75 an hour, um, and I can race my bike. So I went to massage school, and that's what I did. I raced my bike, and I became a Category 1 amateur cyclist, which is the top level in amateur pro-am cycling in the United States. I did that for a while, and my my wife, my girlfriend at the time, had encouraged was encouraging me to go to PT school. I was like, yeah. Well, because I was doing the type of massage, and I was specializing in um, uh, myofascial release and some other... Uh, therapies where I was ended up seeing a lot of chronic pain patients because I was touching them where they hurt and they had been to PT, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage, uh, medications, injections, surgery, etc. and they're like, Aaron, you're the first person who's ever touched me where I hurt. Wow, really? You've been to all these other people and they can't, like that was so simple to me. It's, <laughs> I was like, well, okay, great. And after doing that for six years, my wife was like, you should really go to PT school. I was like, it was, PT was never on my radar. It was never anything that I thought I wanted. I mean, I knew, I mean, yeah, it wasn't on my radar. She encouraged me to do it. And um, it wasn't gonna happen in California. Um, so, uh, because of all the prerequisites required to get to the end of the schools near the Bay Area, I was, it was gonna take me two years of prereqs. So we moved back to North Carolina um, for a lot of other reasons. I said, there's, there's like a 20 hour story. Um, but we, uh, you know, we, you know, like our, we hit our limit in California. Like we weren't going up. We couldn't afford, so we're, instead of throwing a dart at the map, 
we tried near where her family lives on the central coast and we're like, no, that was a nice vacation, but we gotta go somewhere else. And so instead of landing in Kansas or Iowa, we decided to go to Greensboro where I grew up and see how that worked out. And within six months of moving back here, we were both re-enrolled in school and we, we, owned an, we owned a home and we each had a business. So I had opened my massage therapy business again um, and, was, and was enrolled in PT school at Elon. So that's kind of like, so, and then I graduated school. So here's what happened. Here's how I got into cash-based practice. Is I'm in school at my very first um, clinical rotation and it was busy and I was like, all right, you know, and I had to be there 50 hours a week. I was like, well, you know, who's gonna complain? My dad had to do 150 hour weeks. Like my dad, would, you know, he'd write his, you know, he'd, he'd fall asleep right signing his name. I was like, you know, I knew this. I was like, this is easy. 50 hours, 60 hours, no big deal. Like, I was there from 8 to 9. One day, it was 9.15 at night, and I'm sitting there with a, probably 16 more treatment notes, and I'm just like, it's like, fuck. You know, like, this is crazy. I was like, how many people have I seen today? I was all 43 patients, and I was a, it was in my third week as a student. 43 patients, one day. And so, I was like, this is crazy. Like, I just, like, this is great and all, but I can't do this in my career. Like, I can't see this many people. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I can't do it like that. Because I'm trying, I'm coming from a massage background where we spend an hour, hour and a half with people, and 10 minutes of hands-on with one person while I'm directing someone else's exercises across the room wasn't satisfying to me. It wasn't why I got into PT. So that's the big thing that started the ball, that's the history and that started the ball rolling and there's a lot of other pieces in there. But that, and so I started my clinic right, out of P, right after I graduated PT school. Yeah, I've never worked for another physical therapist for a paycheck.